Are you a fan of lobsters? Lighthouses. Red sand. Ocean. Potatoes. Friendly people. Not many people around. (laughs) (laughs) And Prince Edward Island is for you. This is actually mine and Ryan's first time to the smallest and least populated province in Canada. Ryan, what would be your first impression so far? There are a lot of farms. There are, yeah. I didn't uh, expect that certain parts of Prince Edward Island would actually remind me of Saskatchewan. It's like Saskatchewan, except the opposite, because we're surrounded by water. True. (laughs) Most people have heard of Charlottetown, which is the biggest city in Prince Edward Island, and we will be visiting that in my next video. But for this video, we are doing a road Road trip, trip. road trip (laughs) (laughs) around Prince Edward Island, uh, showing you guys some of the top, you know, things to see and do if you have a car, which really you should if you are going to fully tour PEI. So that is what this video is going to be about. But first of all, I wanted to show you guys the amazing property that we are staying at that has its own private beach all down here, the famous red sand cliffs that PEI is known for. It is absolutely beautiful and I would so recommend staying here. So let me show you guys around. So let me show you guys the absolutely stunning accommodation that we are staying at. This is the Maytree Eco Retreat. As you can see, it is a gorgeous dome, a very luxurious dome. They give you a couple of bikes to go around the property with. There are snowshoes for the winter and also you get your own private fire pit. And then when you come onto the deck, as you can see, you have access to a barbecue, which is really nice. There is a lovely seating area. And my personal favorite (laughs) is the jacuzzi. How amazing is this to come home to after a long day of exploring the island, have a drink. They have lovely twinkle lights. The trees even light up. Absolutely spectacular. Now coming into the dome, you will see just how beautiful this space is and really well thought out, really well decorated. Kitchen has everything you need. Their coffee is also absolutely delicious. But my favorite part is probably the living room where Ryan is chilling here. Ryan, what do you think of sleeping in a dome? I think it's pretty amazing. You feel like you're outside, but you're much more comfortable. True. True glamping at its finest. And then to the left here, we have the bedroom. Super comfy bed. Really nice sheets. And what I really like about this property is that they did a very good job at making it feel like four separate spaces like you have the bedroom which is its own space you have the living room seating area you have the kitchen and then you have the washroom which is also beautiful and that i'll show you guys in a minute so this is the beautiful washroom they also give you two fluffy robes to wear while you're on the property it is a full washroom with a really nice rain shower has a proper toilet and is really luxurious considering we are in the middle of nature. So thank you so much to Maytree for having us. I'm going to have their website linked in the description so you guys can book directly with them and also their social media. But now let's get this road trip started uh, with a tour of the northern part of the island.
So no visit to PEI would be complete without a visit to the... Green Gables Museum. That's right. I actually didn't realize just how big of a deal Anne of Green Gables, Huge. the very famous Canadian uh, piece of literature uh, that was written here on PEI by uh, Lucy Maud Montgomery. I didn't know how big of an international sensation this book truly was, and that is evident by the hordes of tour buses that are here right now. So for those of you who are also not so well versed in Anne of Green Gables, it is a famous Canadian novel that was written by Lucy Maud Montgomery in 1908. It is looked at as a classic children's book that gained notoriety all around the world. It was translated into so many different languages and it recounts the adventures of the 11 year old orphan girl Anne Shirley who is sent by mistake to two middle-aged siblings, Matthew and Marilla, who initially wanted to adopt a boy to help them out on the farm, but instead they were sent Anne. Now I won't give any spoilers, but obviously they end up taking Anne in because she is a very smart and inquisitive girl. So whether you're a fan of the novel, the movies, or just want to see a piece of Canadian literary history, I think they did a great job on this heritage spot where they've made a replica of the home that Anne would have lived in at the time. There's a lot of different exhibits about Lucy Maud Montgomery because she herself was a very interesting woman and had to jump through so many hoops to be able to work at that time because it was a rarity for women in the early 1900s. So her story alone is very interesting. All in all, this is a great place to visit in Prince Edward Island and I would definitely recommend putting it on your list. I think we arrived a week too late, Ryan. <laughs> Maybe two weeks. <laughs> Maybe two weeks. It's surprising. Uh, Cavendish, where we are right now, is a really famous resort town here in PEI. And as we were driving around it, everything seems Close. to be closed. <laughs> Even where we are right now, Cavendish Beach, which is in the national park uh, kind of on the northern coast of PEI the booths were closed to actually pay <laughs> to get in the park which is nice yeah. but that means they're closed yeah. for the season so I'm not sure where we're going to have lunch today because uh, all the spots I had marked off when they were open are now closed so for lunch we are going to enjoy the very salty air <laughs> we're on a diet Ryan <laughs> Well, thank God for the Lost Anchor restaurant, one of the few places in the area that is still open. The door is not... <laughs> the door is not locked, just use your muscles. I love it. Wow, that's my kind of place. <laughs> <laughs> The menu also thankfully looks quite good. I mean, this place did have really good reviews. They do have a lobster roll. Got a mix of different kinds of fish, scallops, of course. Oh, lobster mac and cheese. That's interesting. <laughs> but we've actually had a lot of seafood so far. <laughs> Ryan was saying he feels like a burger. <laughs> Look how good this looks. We got seared scallops. We got fresh veggies, I imagine, from this area since there's a lot of farms. Of course, the potatoes, I assume, are from PEI. I guess you got a lot of potatoes with my burger. burger. Look at this. It is a beautiful burger. That's very, very nice. <laughs> All right, we are going to do a taste test of the scallops and the potatoes. They're like two of my favorite things. That's delicious. That's a good scallop. That's a good potato. <laughs> Thank you. 
For the remainder of our day, we decided to continue exploring the national park, the only national park in Prince Edward Island that is situated on the North Shore. It is fronting the Gulf of St. Lawrence and is actually 60 kilometers in length. What's great about the park is that you have a lot of different options of how you want to explore it. Of course, the easiest would be to drive, but they also have a lot of really extensive biking trails, a lot of walking trails, and of course it is also very well known for the numerous beautiful beaches. What I didn't expect is that you kind of have to go in and out of the park to reach different areas, so on the way we ended up going to this really interesting gallery slash cafe. It's called the Dune Studio Gallery and Cafe, and this place had everything. Like they had a whole bunch of artwork that is locally made, some from overseas, seas they had a stunning garden out back so if you get the chance i would definitely recommend making a stop at this place and last but not least we ended up doing a sunset walk on the beach all the way to see the famous covehead harbor lighthouse Prince Edward Island actually has a total of 63 different lighthouses all over the island, so it's quite likely you would see one, but they are the sort of mascot, I would say, of Prince Edward Island, and it's just so scenic to see them in front of the crashing waves. So to finish off our PEI road trip, we are doing something that Ryan is super excited about. We are here at Hillcrest Farms and Ryan, can you tell me why this place is so special? Yeah, this is ranked as the 13th best disc golf course in the whole world. Oh my God. And it's a pretty professional level course and it's Aaliyah's first So I'm gonna suck. <laughs> and the other cool thing is that it's an honor system to play, just $10 a person, so we're gonna put that in here. And I feel that encapsulates PEI from our experience so far, where everything is the honor system. When you're driving along, you will even see signs with like farm fresh eggs or something else that they're selling, and they just have the products there and a box to leave your money. So it's just such good people here with high moral values that uh, they are able to do that. Super cool. How is that? Best disc golf course in Canada. Fantastic. Fantastic. It was pretty nice. A we little muddy. A little muddy. Yeah. Yeah, but beautiful. Lots of trees, mm -hmm. nature, water. Highly recommend. And how would you say the challenge level was for you as somebody who actually plays regularly? Because obviously as somebody who's new, like it's hard. It's hard. <laughs> so for somebody who plays regularly, how did you find it? Uh, I found a lot of trees, Yes, <laughs> uh, but it was good. It wasn't too bad. Like most disc golf courses, they have red tees, which are closer, mm -hmm. and then the blue tees, and then the professional tees. So mm -hmm. we played from the red tees. Yeah. So it wasn't, it wasn't too bad. Yeah. No, yeah. that was fun and like a great thing to do to actually get outdoors, get a bit of a workout because you hike, like you <laughs> hike the course. So it's a really nice outdoorsy sort of, you know, attraction. But that actually concludes our road trip time in PEI. Car's going back. Yeah, we're dropping off the car today. By the way, just want to say that if you need a car rental and they're really expensive from the airport, try Turo, which is like the Airbnb of car rentals. Car B &B. Car B &B. That's what we got. It was substantially less. So, you know, just a thought. 
But all in all, Prince Edward Island has been amazing. We still, of course, have Charlottetown, but driving around, like I have been very impressed by just how lush and green and well kept it is. I was, we were talking about the lawns. And the roads are fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Well maintained, traffic very minimal, at least in the off season. Mm -hmm. And the people are just so friendly. Like they're so kind and down to earth here. If you ever get lost, I'm sure, you know, anybody would be able to help you it's just a really lovely place but let me know in the comments if you guys have any suggestions for things to see and do on prince edward island that we didn't get to because obviously there's a lot and now we will be off to charlottetown so stay tuned for the next video ryan thank you so much for your help Happy with to. my video and as always guys keep being your own kind of beautiful bye now